Hello everyone, today I have another Necromancer tank build for you. Uh, if you watched my video recently, I actually put one out already, and that one was a bit more group focused, group support, giving your group more damage. Now the one I'm sharing with you today is more selfish, but practically makes you um, a literal walking tank. I mean, it has put me in situations where I felt practically invincible and I was laughing out loud practically. So let's get into this here, uh, starting with the gear. Now, like I said, this one is more selfish focus, so we're going more health focus sets, more self buffs, all that good stuff. The whole point of this build is to use, I mean, if you're a starting tank, this is probably a good idea. Now, it is pretty easy to play overall. Um, there are some fights where I actually might even recommend putting this on, like if you are doing Black Rose and you don't have a healer or, you know, any kind of content really we don't have a healer. You do not need a healer for this build. I'll say it right now. Even for trial content, obviously you need a healer for your DPS, but that healer can actually put less focus on you and more on the group. So you're helping your group out in that way at least. But my point is, this thing is freaking fantastic. So let's start with this here. We have our Plague Doctor on sword and board and jewelry. Now I said before, and I will say it again, I typically run double sword and board. I don't run a staff on the back bar. Uh, the staff gives you a bit more damage for the group and among other small things. Um, but the big thing is when you block, you consume magic. Now, believe it or not, I actually recommend double sword board for this one. Reason being, we go through a lot of mag. That is our primary heals and debuffs. So consuming our mag is not really going to help us much. Stam, on the other hand, we can manage a bit better. Because we're not blocking as much, we're able to get in more heavy attacks. So if you want to run a staff, you're going to need to do a bit more heavy attacking if you want to get that mag back up potentially you'll see the skills and the setup later maybe you don't need to so anyways uh plague doctor it's a straight health set basically get about 3900 health on the five piece i go crusher enchant now the one-handed did get nerfed with the enchantment but it's still worth using I currently have this damage shield on the back bar this was actually when i was testing prior to the one-handed nerf it's doesn't get used much, which is why I haven't changed it. The back bar, I don't feel like I light attack very much. I do try to slip them in, but it's nothing too major. So your back bar, not as important unless you're running the staff. Then you obviously want Crusher. Nowadays, I do recommend kind of Crusher on both front and back. Go Infused with Tristat and the Shields. This is a health build, but we still need resources to an extent, or we will be drained quickly. Go into our monster set, 100%. 100% recommend Stonekeeper. The only other one I would do over this for this build would to consider would, e would probably be Bloodspawn just for the ulti gain because our ultis are freaking stupid on Necro Tank. So Stonekeeper though, when you block, you build stacks. After you consume enough stacks, you get Stam Mag and health. It is freaking fantastic. I cannot recommend it enough. Severely underrated and I'm starting to see more people pick it up and realize just how good it is. Notice some tri-stat once again um, on the helmet here. Now that's mostly because I switched use it between builds and I didn't want to change too much. But again, resources are good. But you will notice that our second set piece here, Warrior Poet, is actually infused with just health, not tri-stat. In fact, the pants are also just health. So I went tri-stat on the sword and board and the helmet. I played around with the, the stats a bit and I felt that these were pretty damn good. I do recommend having more health because a lot of necro abilities actually scale off the health, so your your max health, so you're getting more healing back based on how much health you have. So Warrior Poet, getting back to that, absolutely 100% run this set for this build. It is a good set on its own for selfish tanking, quote unquote selfish tanking, um, or you're starting out new tanking, but. It is fantastic for this because resistances we're getting right there. So if you're not running Lord Warden or Bloodspawn, you're going to have about capped resistances if you're a Nord. But no, number one reason is this five piece here. More health, but 10% max health by... Um, way, it, it scales off your max health. You get 
based on that. That's minor toughness, which can be applied by wardens. However, wardens are not always going to have that on, on you, uh, the minor toughness, and there's a good chance there won't even be one in your group. You don't know. But you absolutely want this up at all times, and I will get exactly why you need to run it for this kind of build to be to make it extremely good. Um, but I will get back to you on that. It is fantastic. Uh, I put health and chance on them. I felt that the tri stat and my attribute allotment kind of allowed me to just put health and chance on these, no problem. Sturdy on the small, infused on the big. Notice I do the undaunted, light helm, shoulders are medium, heavy, rest of it. Jewelry and chance, I'm just keeping the same. Reduce potion cooldown by 5 seconds and 2 bash cost redux. Now if you want to run 3 bash, uh, bash block, that's totally fine. I like the potions. I feel like they come up at the perfect time with this and channel and I love it. Healthy on the on the uh, traits on them. Nothing big, nothing crazy there. Ma basically just straight health in these with a little bit of resources sprinkled in there with the tri step. So let's get to our character sheet. First off, Running long fin pasty with melon sauce, tri stat food. Pretty, pretty, kind of could have been a given. Same thing with the potion, tri stat potion. Now, I don't like to burn these like crazy. A lot of times I actually resort to just trash pots. I just manage resource enough that I love my trash pots. But these are 100% going to be best in slot for you, especially because movability pots are great and all, and I do like them for some situations. But when you can take so much damage, the the um, immovability is not as necessary in this case. In fact, the resources will probably do you better because a single attack will get you lots and lots of health. We'll get into that later. So, character sheet. I'm doing 9 mag, 45 health, 10 stam. Notice I'm not going all into stam. Once again, I like to have a decent resource pool. Originally, I went all into health, realized eh, it, it, it seems to play out better when you got a bit into, into your uh, resources. Again, try stat. Now I'm doing the Atronach Mundus here, Mad Mag Recovery. My other tank build, I said Lord. I did the Lord Stone. Now either one are good for these builds, Atronach or Lord. They're interchangeable. I actually do recommend Atronach if you have enough health to work with. And the Necro comes with passive health, so I actually do recommend the At Atronach Stone on essentially probably any tank build for the Necro that is. So that mag recovery is sitting at 864 right now. That's pretty good, but it will go up later, as you will see. Uh, Menord, as I said earlier, that is because I get health, I get stam. Mainly, I get the ulti gains and the resistances. Now, Imperial will actually give you more health than a Nord will, but the Nord passives, I feel like, cannot be you can you cannot skip on. Nord, in my opinion, is best in slot tank race right now and I would not go without it. So you get that ulti, you get your resistances, and because of these resistances and because of the warrior pro resistances, we're going to hit cap about on the dot with the champion point allotment we have set up. So Imperial probably would be second best for this type of build. If not, then probably Argonian like normal, just for resources, especially because we're burning through them so quickly. So I'm gonna get to skills. Now, my last tank build, which I will probably link to you in the comments or description or elsewhere. Um, if you want better explanations of the abilities and why they're used than I'm going to provide today, then go take a look at that one where I go a little more in depth. I'm trying to save a bit of time this, this time around so you can kind of get the build in your hands and a little, worry a little less about the abilities themselves. And so you can kind of see for yourself what they do. But again, I will go into some detail just if you want fuller detail. Go, uh, I recommend going checking out my other tank build, which is again is more group focused. So, first skill is going to be Hungry Scythe here. Now this comes from the Bone Tyrant tree. It is going to be your burst heal, basically your dragon blood, green dragon blood equivalent if you're a DK. The heals on this thing are absurd for only 29011 mag cost. So what you'll notice quickly about my setup here is that it's almost exactly the same if not exactly the same skills as my other tank build. And that is because both are extremely applicable. They are both fantastic and I recommend using them. They are what I've deduced as the best or the best or the better options for a necro tank. And I don't intend to change that unless they uh, get a hit with a nerf. 
But anyways, Death Scythe, morph it into Hungry Scythe on the Bone Tyrant tree. Now, here's the fun part. This is a case where you're getting some scaling. Normally in my other build, you were getting a good bit of health, and every five additional enemies, you get more healing. So, it gave you a crap ton of healing on the other build. Now, this one scales off health. I now have 54, almost 55k health with the current setup. So, I'm getting almost 3,000 for each additional, 8,200 for the initial, and then 1,250 as my dot, and the dot comes from the morph. So, I'm getting a good, like, 15, then 20, like, 20 to 30,000 health back from a single swing if I hit about five to six enemies. So, absolutely want this 200, 200, 2,911 Magda call to do it, and it goes in a cone, so it's extremely easy to use, got good range, very, very helpful. Doesn't burn through your mag too badly, so you can even spam this thing and you'll get through some ridiculously hard stuff. In fact, this is one reason that this build is so very strong. Because when you scale off health and you throw in something that gives you this much health, you are... It is ridiculous. Next up, this one's a given. Melee, range taunt, um, pierce armor, getting debuffing things. Poke as much stuff as you can. You want to debuff everything for your group and keep them aggroed. Next up is something I will probably throw in every tank build I ever make, and that is Deep Thoughts. Now that comes from the Sigic tree. That is about rank 8 Sigic, and this one, this morph, gives you more resources back. So all you gotta do is when you sit in it, and you get resources. So I'll show you here real quick. So I'm burning and burning my resources, I'm burning them. And all you gotta do is sit here, boom, resources come back. It's a very reactive ability, meaning I can come out of it with a block, I can come out of it with a roll, I can come out of it and cast another ability, basically. It's very quick to react, so you can sit there and wait for a heavy attack, heavy, 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 block, easy. Resources for days. You can take a lot of hits. Now, in the last build, I said you can sit and meditate, and you have 10 guys late attacking you, and you can take it. So, that's the case here, except turn it up a notch. This thing is amplified. Because of the Deliberation passive, which, again, I recommend fully leveling Sigic, so you can get these passives. Um, deliberation, 30% less damage when taken. So I've got a bunch of health, I've capped resistances, and I've got Deliberation. So I can sit here, and the stuff that I can take for hits is ridiculous. In fact, I was doing some difficult, you know, trial level vet bosses, dungeon, hard mode vet bosses. I was just letting shit hit me. I was just letting it hit me and seeing what could kill me. Not many things could one hit me when it came to um, bosses' heavy attacks, which is fantastic if you're newer to tanking and you're looking for a slight bit of a crutch because you're not so keen on watching the heavies yet. You don't know what you're looking for. So this is insane for absorbing damage. And Meditate kind of is only helping that and also giving you resources back. So, next up, we're going to the uh, Bone Tyrant Tree again, and we're going to go for Necrotic Potency. Now, Necrotic Potency is a morph of Bitter Harvest. It absorbs uh, bodies that are laid on the ground. So, dead bodies, dead teammates, dead enemies, and bodies that you can create with your abilities. If you played a Necro, you know that the bodies that are available to you are your bread and butter when it comes to certain setups, and this is another case. This ulti gain is absurd. Especially when you're a Nord. The ulti gain is ridiculous. You're getting health and you're getting ulti. Now, this morph gives you an extra three ultimate per body consumed. So, this is six total per body. And the healing scales off max health. So, we're getting a little bit more health back when we are consuming bodies. So, that's a nice thing. The last part of this is a little passive. Uh, take 3% uh, less damage taken when it's slotted. That is why we are front barring it. Now, that is a little mistake I made in the last setup. I actually... Made a little. I tried to make a little edit. I recommend putting it on the front bar, not the back bar, because you can get your damage taken reduced on the front, and you're spending most of your time on your front. Very good place to have it, and you can kind of hit it whenever you want now because it's on your front. So, extremely, extremely good ability. Pop that thing as much as you can. Uh, the last ability on our front bar is Agony Totem. This comes from the, once again, from the Bone Tyrant Tree. That is Bone Totem, and then you morph it into Agony Totem. 
consumes a good bit of mag. Extremely, extremely good, though. It reduces damage taken by 8%. It will fear them, so this is your replacement for, like, claws if you're a DK. So you might have to predict their movement a little bit, because it takes, you can see, one, two, burst. That will stun them. Now it fears. And it can fear, I've seen six or seven enemies it can fear. So it will make them unable to attack you, and will keep them immobilized for your team. It is, hands down, one of the best abilities in the game for a tank right now. Undoubtedly. So reduce damage, fear, and then when you morph it, you get this pure agony. It's a synergy that your teammates can see. When they activate it, every enemy hit takes 8% more damage. So reduce damage, stun locking them, takes more damage the enemies do. Absolutely amazing ability. Get this thing down whenever you can. And uh, yeah, very easy to use. Last up, we have our ultimate. This is one of the best ultimates in the game for a tank. Probably the best, if anything. So what this does is it makes you a big mother goliath, which is cool as hell. And it lasts for 20 seconds. So Magma, Magma Shell is freaking stupid good for a DK tank. This is better, and I mean it. So you get 30,000 max health. You, so your, your max health pool is increased by 30,000 for 20 seconds. You're also uh, re returned 30,000. So if you have 2,000 health and you're like about to die, hit it, boom, 32,000 health, and your, your max pool is higher. And every light and heavy attack, you get more health back. This scales off your max health, so you're actually getting more back. Now, when you morph Bone Goliath to Ravenous Goliath, it produces an AoE around your feet, a rather big one. And every enemy it hits, it actually life drains them a bit. You get, in this case, almost 3,300 damage every second. So, again, scale off your max health. So, because we have so much health, we're getting more. Now, here's the interesting thing. This thing gives you a stupid amount of health back, and it gives you a stupid health pool. Watch this. So, 30,000 max health is what I'll get. I'm sitting at about 55 right now. I'm going to transform. So, I have 98.7. That's not an extra 30k. Here's the AoE, by the way. Pretty easy to use. Pretty big. You can even use abilities when you're in it. It's fantastic. Um, anyways, that is not 30,000. That is more. If you know Warrior Poet, you would have guessed it. That is why we're running it. So 10% increased health, or 10% of our max health. That is what our health is based off of. So when we increase our health pool by 30,000, we're increasing our health pool even more because Warrior Poet is giving us more health, which then is increasing the scaling of our abilities even more. So we're getting even more healing back. So in fact, I'll come back to it later and I will show you just how much it scales. Um, but for now, we wait for that. I'm going to move on to the back bar. And this is, again, pretty much the exact same as my other build in this case i'm not making this first slot uh flex spot this one is very good it is mortal coil it comes out of the living death tree morphed from restoring tether what it will do is it will lock onto a body and heal you for a good amount and in fact if your teammates walk between that that uh that little siphon that you're doing then they actually get healed as well now you got to consume a corpse so that is something to remember but the whole reason well one of the big reasons we use it is it restores stamina. Almost 2,300, or excuse me, almost 3,000 stamina over 12 seconds when we're, while we're siphoning. So even if we're blocking, we're getting stamina back. It is fantastic. I like to have this up a bunch. It is a little costly, but it's still very, very good to have up. Keeps me alive too. If I'm on my back bar, and my back bar, I'll tell you right now, does not have any major heals. My front bar's got my scythe and uh, my potency, and the crack potency, and my meditate. My back bar doesn't have much. If I'm stuck on my back bar and I can't bar swap, I pop a mortal coil and I get some healing going back for me. So, try to keep that up. And a little passive, healing done's increased by 3%. So again, no major healing on the back bar, but while this is going, you're even getting an extra 3%. And if you have a healer, 
then you're getting a little bit buffed there. So very good ability. Highly recommend it. Next up is our ranged taunt. Again, pretty standard. Undaunted Tree. It's Inner Fire. And I morph it into Inner Rage to keep it at mag. Very expensive ability for how much you would think you would use it. But it will be reduced. Not the cost will be reduced, but how much you have to use it will be reduced. And you'll see that later. So, Undaunted, Inner Rage. Pretty standard. Next up. We are going with Silver Leash because we don't have any like unrelenting chain like the DK does or the portals that the Warden throws down. We're using Silver Leash out of the Fighter's Guild tree. It is Silver Bolt. You morph it into Silver Leash and it will pull enemies to you. Consumes a fair bit of Stam, so we have to consider how much we want to use it. A lot of times I recommend using it on enemies that um, are going towards your group because the melee guys will walk up to you and... Usually, they'll walk up to you, and you can just poke them. Easy peasy. The range guys um, will get pulled in naturally, and I will get to that. But Silver Leash, it is good for a snap reflex when you got to get something into you. Try to avoid spamming it, though. This thing can really burn through it, especially while you're blocking. Still very helpful. Next up, Spirit Guardian. This comes out of the Living Death Tree. So, Spirit Mender, and you morph into Spirit Guardian. Now, it gives you a bit of health. Um, it can give your allies health, too. It will bounce around whoever has lower health. Unfortunately, it does not scale off of our max health. That's okay. We're not using it for the healing. What we're using it for is the 10% damage mitigation. Now, keep in mind, we have a bunch of health. We have cap resistances. We have a ridiculous amount of incoming healing. So 10% reduced damage is only adding to the fact that we are goddamn invincible when it comes to things. So, absolutely keep this thing up at all times. It also produces a body when it gets destroyed. So, if it gets destroyed, we get ourselves a nice little body, and we can use that for our Necrotic Potency on the front bar to build ulti, or we can use it for our Mortal Coil on the back bar to siphon some stamina and some health back. So, see, look, even if I'm blocking, I'm getting stamina back, which is not typical. So... Very good ability. Try to keep this thing up at all times. You definitely want to get that damage mitigation going for yourself. Okay. And our last from our back bar ability is Beckoning Armor. So this is another one you're going to want to keep up 100% of the time. This is your Major Resolve and Major Ward producer. So this thing will actually give you the resistances that you need to hit cap. Look at that. 33,000, a little over, and then 33,000 physical, almost on the dot. That is really, really good. We are at cap and doing well for ourselves. So again, you want to keep this up at all times. Now, another beautiful thing about it, produces a body for us. See, I just consumed it on the ground there. Produces a body. Great, great, great for other abilities and for building ulti. Now, the real reason we use it, and that's why I don't recommend using Mighty Shudan. Mighty Shudan will provide you the same buffs that this would. Um, so you would have another slot to use. But, that's not why we use it. We, or that, excuse me, that's why we don't use it. Because we want to use this ability. We don't want to not have it. Because the morph for it will actually pull ranged enemies into you. They will chain them automatically for you when they attack you, if they haven't been recently CC'd, that is. So if a mage is hitting you, an archer, I mean, a, a strangler spitting at you, in fact, it will stun them. I was doing Moss Hard Mode recently, and I was walking around, and if you've done Moss Hard Mode, you know the stranglers will actually stun you. So I was walking by them, they would spit at me, and they, would, they were about to pull me in, but they got stunned because it tried to pull them in. And when it pulled them in, it stunned them. So it's extremely useful. It is a, I'll say, a thoughtless ability because it does all the work for you. You can put it on. You can start getting your melee guys hit an inner fire on a ranged enemy so that you can save stam. You don't need to use silver leash. So you can hit them with an inner fire. Guess what? Your armor's pulling the range guys in, and you have time to poke the melee guys. Next thing you know, you got all of them all stacked up on you within seconds. It does all the work for you, basically. All you got to do is hit them with a ranged taunt. So this is where you can balance. Do I want to use Silver Leash because I have a lot of stam, or do I want to use Inner Fire because I have a lot of mag right now? So 
You can kind of play with that and use it a bit dynamically. And you got a lot of options to work with. So again, absolutely, 100% keep this up at all times. And notice it's on the back bar. We got our two buffs, essentially, on our back bar here. So, again, creates a corpse. That will cover our back bar abilities. Now for our last ultimate. Again, one of the best ultimates in the game. Absolutely freaking amazing. Now, if you're not supporting your group and damage, the very least you can do is pick their asses up off the ground if they die. So, Living Death, this is Reanimate, morphs into Renewing Animation. Costs 335 at base, so the most expensive ulti in the game, but has a range of 28 meters. So what it will do is you'll put it on the ground and it will bring three allies back to life. And because of this morph, we get 5,300 resources, mag and stam, per ally. So if you res three people, you're getting over 15,000 of each resource. In our case, we're basically going to almost cap ourselves out. We're going to be back to full. So, stupid amazing. If you need resources, you can even rely on this a bit if somebody's dead. But if you need your oh shit ulti, which is your, your Goliath, then definitely hold on to that. But if you feel like you don't need it, which to be honest with you, with the way this build is set up, I don't use the Goliath a lot. The only time I felt like I was using it was if I was doing Battlegrounds, because again, this this thing is actually really strong in Battlegrounds. I have played about eight matches of Battlegrounds with this thing. I literally have not died once. I am not joking. The Scythe and the Goliath and everything going for you makes you practically invincible. People will give up on you in PvP because of this thing. It is insane. So in PvE, where people aren't debuffing you very much, if at all, imagine what they're doing to you. Basically next to nothing, unless they're a boss. So, very good for resing your team, but if you need your front bar ulti, so be it. It is your call to make. But just remember how much this does help your team. It is extremely useful. One of the best ultis in the game. So, that will cover our abilities. Very quick and easy, in fact. Now, the last thing I do want to show you with the abilities, though, is I got my ulti back here, my Goliath. Now, remember, it will give me more than 30k health because of Warrior Poet. So, we'll be pushing almost 100k health, which is ridiculous. That's, I mean, it's just ridiculous. When I put the Lordstone on and I put 64 in the health, I got like 105, 106k health. I don't deem it that necessary. In fact, it's overkill, if anything, so... I put those in the resources instead, and that's my explanation for that. But, because health scales, let's take a look at our Scythe here. Because our Scythe is our biggest heal. It is, our, it is one of our best abilities available to us. It's our burst heal. 8200 right now. 2700 per. 1250 on the heal. That's a dot heal. So the main one's here. 8200, 2700. We pop this on. Now we have 98k health. 14,800 health, 5,000 additional, 2,200 dot, 5 times 5, 25k, 25k plus about 15k, that's about 40,000 health, 22,000 times 5, so about 2,000 times 5, that's another 10,000. We are hitting five, uh, 50,000 health return to you if you hit 5 to 6 enemies while you're in Goliath form. 50 to 60,000 health returned to you in a 2,900 or 27, whatever it was, 100 mag ability. Does that not explain itself for how ridiculous this build is? It is absurd. So again, I'm going to use BGs as an example because uh, players a lot of times can be a lot more overwhelming and difficult than even, fuck, than even a lot of PvE, Pet Trials, Black Rose, any of that crap. Because people are unpredictable. Um, so there's cases where you got six or eight people on you. You pop your Goliath. Your Goliath is draining their health. Again, the health drain is increased because of the scaling health. Because Warrior Poe gives you the bonus, too. You're hitting a Scythe, full health. They take you down, let's say they take you down halfway somehow. Boom. Full health. Boom. Full health. It is ridiculous. Constantly, if you are getting hit with absurd amounts of damage. Like, again, Vmos Harbor, I'm going to use an example of because I did it recently. I got four of those Baylor ghosts on me at one point. Um, my whole team was dead. I literally got through that dark phase, if you've done it, 
you get a dark phase, and the boss essentially multiplies, and the team all gets their own copy. Now, if your team dies, the copy will go to somebody else. So you have four bosses chasing you if you're the only one up. I had three, uh, three or four of them chasing me, along with dire wolves, and I lived through all of it. I was able to walk around, hit heals, block them, dodge roll them. They are 22k hits with max resistances if you block it, and there were four of them. And I got hit, healed, got hit, healed, got hit, healed. Oh, take a break here, meditate a second, let's meditate, heal. Now, the resources, like I mentioned earlier, we have about 800 to 900 right now. When you have a spirit mender up, you're getting an extra 200. We now have almost 1100. So, hitting a heal. Got hit. Heal. Got hit. Heal. Got hit. Put a totem down, maybe. Let's hit ourselves a nice little meditate. And back to full health. Imagine if you were using a potion. So, passes on the neck are really strong. I'm not going to go through them really in detail. Um, it's one of those cases where you can probably just get them all. But in the case of the first trick is a DPS tree. You can just get the first two. All it does is reduce the cost of the Spirit Mender. Now, it's already pretty damn cheap. So, get the rest of the passives for the rest of the trees. One-handed shield, get all that. If you're doing Destro, get all that. Light, medium, heavy, that's a given. Um, I do Fighter's Guild so I can get that on that ultimate. Sigic, I already told you about that. Undaunted, obviously, you want the extra uh, resources and health. And that's really it. So, oh, but Alchemy, you want that medicinal use. I do always recommend doing that. 30% longer potion, so more recovery for us. Anyways, that will now cover our skills. I think I covered enough. I think you get the point of how stupid this setup is. So, I'll jump into CP real quick. It, I'll tell you right now, it is the exact same as my other build. Nothing changed significantly, if at all. 56 in the Warlord, saving Stam. 49 Arcanist, 45 Tenacity. Definitely slip in those heavy attacks whenever you can. Basic tanking, tanking 101. Get those heavies in as much as you can. Get those resources up back to full. 48 into Tumbling, 72 Shadow Ward. Plenty, plenty of stamina saving there. I do 75 into Bless, 75 into Elfborn. I like getting the healing. Personally, I don't like going to 100 on abilities. I don't, I don't deem it necessary, even though the rest of them are kind of DPS focused. So again, DPS focused, I just went 37 to Master of Arms, I went 51 into Precise Strikes, 32 into Piercing, nothing crazy there. Now, the next set of trees are really important, because this is how we get our cap resistances. I go 61 in the Ironclad, 61 in the Ironclad, you can do 81 points, you can do 72, 22%, 23%, whatever. I don't deem it necessary. If I haven't shown you enough with resistances and the amount of health returned, I don't think this is going to make a big difference, personally. So, I've never had an issue, never complained about it, never feel like I'll change it. 61 is good. Now, I do 30 into Spell Shield because I save points from Ironclad. 30 into Spell Shield, I do 40 into Thick Skinned, 49 into Hardy and Ellie, respectively. I do 11 into Quick Recovery, just get a bit of extra healing received. And I do 30 into Heavy Armor Focus, which is Physical Resistance. So, I have 30 in my Physical Resistance, 30 points into Spell Resistance. That is what will put us up to our cap here, almost on the dot. So, absolutely recommend doing that. Thanks to Warrior Poet, thanks to the CP points, thanks to being a Nord, we hit our cap without even wearing a monster set that gives us more resistances. So, that's gonna be it. Um, that seems to have covered it all. I highly, highly recommend playing this build. It is, just, just give it a go, play with the bodies, because again, you gotta keep your bodies up, keep your buffs up. Keep your debuffs up. See what this thing can do. Now, it takes a bit of finesse, but it is extremely forgiving. It is probably the most forgiving tank build out there right now because of the heals, because you have so much health. You can take so much damage because of the resistances. So, give it a go. If you think it's shit, I'll be surprised. Um, but again, this is a selfish focus build. I don't typically run health focus builds. Now, I have been running it for some content for fun. And because there's times where you don't have a healer. There's times where you just want to be fucking invincible. Uh, again, Battlegrounds or PvP, Cyrodiil is a good example. This thing works in there well. So, you got to kind of question yourself and ask, what kind of build am I looking for? Am I looking for a health setup? Run this. You'll be practically invincible. Now, am I more comfortable and don't need that much health and 
can go more group focused, I highly recommend taking a look at my other tank build that again I will link to you. That's more group focused and probably will serve your group a little bit better. But if your tank is dead, what's the point anyways, you know? Now this thing is super fun and in the end isn't that what we play games for. So you take your pick. I recommend either or. Necro tanks are the best out there right now in my opinion. So definitely give them a go. Enjoy them while they're hot. 